This video was made possible by Brilliant. In this flyover, the Starship factory at Roberts Road begins to rise. New propellant tanks arrive at pad 39A, and believe it or not, we finally get our eyes on some actual New Glenn hardware. I'm Jack Byer with NASA Spaceflight, bringing you all the info we can glean from our aerial adventures over the Cape and Kennedy Space Center. As always, with photos and videos from Julia and Steven. Let's get right into it, starting with Roberts Road. At Roberts Road, the roof sections for the Starship factory that we spotted on our last flyover have begun to be installed. It appears that a slight tilt to the north can be seen in the roof, indicating the south side of the building could be taller than the north side of it. The concrete foundation continues to be poured on the ground, and flooring is already being installed as well. To the south, work is continuing on installation of more power lines and fluid conduits for that part of the building. On our last flyover, one of the chopstick arms was having one of its shoulders installed. On this flyover, now both have their shoulders installed. It doesn't seem like any more pieces have been delivered in the time since we first saw them arrive, but we'll be keeping our eyes open for future deliveries in future flyovers. One interesting thing to note is that these chopsticks are noticeably shorter than the ones installed on the Starship launch tower at Starbase Boca Chica. The reason for this is not yet known, and I'll refrain from speculating here. As for the QD arm, we can see here where the ship umbilical will eventually go. At Starbase Boca Chica, the main body of the QD arm was installed first, and then the sort of pedestal for the ship umbilical was installed next. It's likely we'll see a similar approach here, or perhaps the whole QD arm will be installed as one on the tower. Either way, we should know soon, as the tower level that hosts the QD arm will be the next one to roll out to 39A. Speaking of tower sections rolling out, the fourth tower section at the tower construction area is now gone, having rolled to Launch Complex 39A on July 20th, right in the middle of a thunderstorm. Which is pretty standard for Florida in the summer. I should call them summer storms, am I right? <laughs> Meanwhile, like I said, the fifth tower section is being prepared for rollout in the coming days. It might even be rolled out by the time you watch this. You can even see a pair of SPMTs staged nearby. Once again, this is the tower section that the QD arm will attach to when it's ready to be installed. To the north, the 8th tower section is now under construction. You might notice this one is shorter than the others. This is because the top two sections of the tower are shorter to accommodate for the roof section of the tower. This one already has one of the roof section levels installed with floor panels likely to be installed next. Nearby, a couple of short columns and cross beams can be seen for what is likely to be the ninth and final tower segment for 39A's Starship Launch Tower. To the south, Kennedy Space Center's Starship Mega Bay continues to see progress on its foundations, with more and more concrete being poured. Meanwhile, toward the east at Hangar X, a Falcon 9 fairing half can be seen under a tarp on the back of a trailer. We don't know if this fairing half is used or new, or if it's incoming or outgoing, but either way, it's super cool to see routine reuse of rocket fairings thanks to Falcon 9 and SpaceX. Moving on to Launch Complex 39A, SpaceX's Starship launch tower is now one level taller. Like I said a minute ago, the tower's fourth segment rolled out on July 20th, and the next day it was stacked onto the rest of the tower. During our flyover, the metal stand it had been sitting on was still nearby, along with the massive load spreader used to lift tower sections into place. The tower itself is seeing more progress as well. Some of the scaffolding from the top of the first level is now being removed as crews are likely done properly securing and joining these two sections. Meanwhile, more ring sections keep appearing on the west side for what looks to be some kind of giant tank. Here, you can even see some scaffolding to work on the welds of these rings. The giant mystery structure is looking more and more like a stand for this giant tank. We don't currently know what this giant tank might be for, but nearby we can see stands for two smaller horizontal tanks. Coincidentally, during the flyover, we also spotted these horizontal tanks arriving at the Cape via the barge. Similar to how SpaceX transported several other horizontal tanks to Launch Complex 39A earlier this year. Further to the north, a berm appears to be going up. It could perhaps be temporary, but it wouldn't be surprising to see some sort of berm or blast protection to the north, since that's where the methane tank farm is located. Speaking of the methane tank farm, some groundwork and clearing can be seen to the north of the hydrogen sphere at LC-39A. The hydrogen sphere is being converted into a giant methane storage tank for use with Starship. Additional horizontal tanks and some subcoolers can also be seen. Perhaps this groundwork to the north is part of an expansion to the methane side of the tank farm. At the main ramp, the Falcon Transporter Erector, or TE, is in launch configuration after supporting the launch of the Starlink Group 4-25 mission. 
Soon, it'll be lowered to horizontal for work on its systems ahead of the next launch from 39A, which is expected to be another Starlink flight in about two weeks. Two weeks. Moving on again, this time to Port Canaveral, SpaceX's fleet was mostly out in the ocean during this flyover. Only Dragon recovery vessels Shannon and Megan, as well as fairing recovery vessel Bob, were in port. Back on land, Falcon 9 Booster 1051 was on the booster stand, being processed and readied for landing leg retraction. This booster flew on the Starlink Group 4-21 mission, marking its 13th flight to space and back. The booster transporter, a converted orbiter transport system from the shuttle era, was sitting nearby, waiting for booster processing to wrap up. Once this is done, the booster will be flipped horizontal onto the transporter and rolled back to Hangar X, where it'll be refurbished and readied for its next flight. During the flight, Julia and Steven also took a trip out to check on Launch Complex 49, SpaceX's future Starship Launch Complex to the north of LC-39. No work has been done here yet, and approvals and paperwork are still ongoing, so work may not begin for a while. Still, it's interesting to check up on potential progress here, and we'll keep our eyes on LC-49 going forward. Next up, at NASA's 39B, the launch site for the Space Launch System rocket continues to sit empty. SLS rolled back to the Vehicle Assembly Building on July 2nd after a successful wet dress rehearsal, and teams have finally set a launch date. That's right, SLS is currently targeting August 29th at 8.33 a.m. Eastern Time, with backup windows on September 2nd and September 5th. This means there's a very real possibility we see SLS launch before Starship. Tell us which you think will be first in the comments. Moving on, LC-16 has been quite active, with Relativity Space continuing their tests of their Terran-1 rocket, with the most recent being a successful spin-start test of all nine of their Aeon engines on the first stage. Moving on now to Blue Origin's Launch Complex 36, we saw on our last flyover that the Jarvis test tank had been removed from its stand, and now a new test tank has taken its spot. While Jarvis was made up of multiple stainless steel rings welded together similar to SpaceX's Starship, this new test tank appears to be a complete New Glenn second stage, even painted white with Blue Origin's signature feather logo. It's super interesting to finally get eyes on some New Glenn hardware. Meanwhile, at Blue's South Campus at Exploration Park, concrete has been poured for the planned expansion of Blue's warehouse, adding 62,000 square feet to the already existing 354,000 square feet. Work also continues on clearing land for future expansions, notably space for Phase 3 of Blue's plans to add more manufacturing capability to their Florida facilities. At Blue Origin's 2CAT facility, there appears to be a new structure on the ground, ready to be lifted. This could be the door that we talked about in a previous flyover. 2CAT is New Glenn's second stage cleaning and testing facility, hence the name 2CAT. Next up, at Slick 41, United Launch Alliance has a mobile launch platform for their upcoming Vulcan rocket on the pad. The MLP doesn't have the Vulcan Pathfinder on it, so it's not clear why the MLP is on the pad, but perhaps it's just undergoing some sort of fit checks. Vulcan is set to fly no earlier than October 2022, with its first stage powered by two BE-4 engines provided by Blue Origin. Now, I'd like to take a moment and thank our sponsor for this flyover, Brilliant. The best way to learn is by doing something yourself and getting hands-on experience, and Brilliant is a fantastic tool for exactly that. Far better than just watching a video or reading a book, Brilliant is excellent in helping you learn a variety of STEM topics interactively and at your own pace. Brilliant uses fun examples, diagrams, and simple questions to help guide you through all kinds of topics, whether you want to brush up on your scientific thinking or you want to dive all the way into something more dense like calculus or astrophysics. Plus, if you ever get stuck and you want to know more, there's always a helpful explanation to be found. Viewers of this channel might enjoy learning about the famous rocket equation as part of the classical mechanics course. Or, if you're not ready for that yet, the excellent new Everyday Math course will give you the foundational bedrock you need to feel comfortable with more advanced topics. Get started learning on Brilliant for free today with a special offer just for our viewers. Visit brilliant.org slash NASA Spaceflight or click the link in the description. The first 200 people to sign up will get 20% off their annual premium membership. Thanks again to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Well, that's it for this flyover. Stay tuned to our channel to get all the latest news on Starship and all things spaceflight. If you liked this video, tell us in the comments, and consider signing up for our YouTube membership program. We've been posting the full, unedited flyover footage as members-only content, in case that's something you'd like to see. Alright, until next time.